What can I say, partner? Follow Charlie. He's a good one to sniff out trouble. Stay close to Charlie. Go on then, boy. Sorry, partner.
Mr. Marston, how are you? Good, Mr. McFarlane. How are you? I'm well. Would you mind riding with me to Armadillo? I've got to get some supplies and I could do with the company. Of course. You can take the reins. It wouldn't do for a terrifying bounty hunter such as yourself to be seen driven around by a woman. <laughs> Hop on up, Mr. Marston. Is there a problem, Mr. Marston? Can we get going? You're looking much better, considering you were almost buzzard food a couple days ago. I have you to thank for that, miss. So do tell me, have you needlessly risked your life since we last spoke? No, miss, I have not. Well, that's a relief. Perhaps there's hope for you yet. I wouldn't bet on it. Oh, there's always hope, Mr. Marston. You can't be a rancher in this kind of country if you don't believe that. An admirable attitude, miss. I suppose so. I can't think of any other way to stay sane, to be frank. What about you? Have you ever given up hope altogether? Hope hasn't really entered into it. It's not really something I think about. A peculiar outlook. I can't really say I understand you. I can't always say I do either. Oh, don't be so deliberately enigmatic. I'm not, miss. Yes, you are. You are being deliberately obscure as a substitute for having a personality. I just know there are two theories to arguing with women, and neither one works. I'm not even going to dignify that gibberish with a response. How do you do, sir? You never did tell me where you live. I have a small holding up in Great Plains. A farmer? Yeah, and I'm the Queen of England. And at what point during your day of hunting down outlaws do you find time to raise chickens? Only been at it three years or so. I guess I'm kind of new to it. You're telling me? So who's looking after this farm of yours right now? Uncle. Well, he's not my uncle, as far as I know. Just an old dog who's as lazy as a lizard on a hot day. The kind of fella laboring under the delusion that age brings wisdom. Uh, sounds like the perfect person to leave in charge of your entire livelihood. You go way back. And I didn't have a lot of choice. I'd be getting back there if I was you. That's what I'm trying to do, miss. I don't. We talked about coming down here many times, but never made it. Who's we? Me and the folks I used to... used to work with. Yeah, New Austin. The last real outlaw country. Where the old ways still hold true. Do a man wrong, he'll shoot you for it. Do a man right? Well, he still may shoot you for it. But at least you have an idea of what's right and what's wrong there. Dear, oh dear, Mr. Marston. What dreadful novel did you get that romanticized dribble out of? Those days are long gone if they were ever here at all. According to Paul, those days were just people shooting each other because they lost the cards. We'll be lucky if our ranch survives another five years. Businessmen are the new cowboys. Russian. That was when Paul thought I would become a lady. A change of pasture doesn't always make for a fatter calf. So this is Armadillo. Manhattan it is not. But it does okay for us. Most important thing for you right now is getting yourself into Dr. Johnson's office to purchase some medicine. The first one's on me. Thank you, miss. I'll pay you back. I'm sure you shall. The doc's a good fellow. He saved your life, so be polite to him. Meet me in front of the general store when you're done. I heard some damn cannibals that young lad off with them. Nobody saw where he hid the car. If this place cleans up. Think about moving on. Well, if you say so. How are you, friend? 
Finally come to get that bullet out your leg. I sure hope you have any night fevers, come back and see me. They're all fine guns. I'm going to quit this job and live the easy life. Well, thanks for driving me. It was nice to be able to enjoy the view for once. And a little company never hurts now and again. You're more than welcome, miss. Least I can do. Thank you for the medicine. Why don't you have a look around Armadillo? You can always take the stagecoach back to the ranch later. I might just do that. Travel safely, miss. Try not to get yourself shot. I won't be around to save you this time. Mr. Marston, I've been hearing about your plans. Have you, Miss McFarland? Yes, from Lee Johnson. To settle here and build a life for yourself. I'm afraid those aren't my plans. See, I already have a life. Well, I had one, and I'm trying to reclaim it. Or maybe what you could say is that I had two, and I'm trying to end one of them so the other can survive. You do so love to talk in riddles, Mr. Marston. Do you do that? I wonder, as a substitute for having anything interesting to say? Probably, Miss McFarland. Oh, call me Bonnie, you fool. Call me Bonnie. Miss McFarland, I'm married. I have a son. I had a daughter, but she died. Years before that, I rode in a gang. We robbed banks trains, held people ransom. We killed people we didn't like. Bill Williamson was in that gang. Now, if I don't capture my former brother in arms, great harm will befall my family. Now, I don't suppose any of this is very interesting to you, but I hope it explains why I wasn't so eager to talk about it. 
No, I do understand. I had no idea. You poor man. Even in this new country, memories don't really fade. My father was an illiterate Scot born on the boat into New York. He never saw his homeland, but to hear him talk about it, you'd imagine he only ever ate haggis and wore a kilt. And he hated the English for what they had done to his great-grandparents that he'd never met. People don't forget. Nothing gets forgiven. That's true, especially when it comes to money. And you know, even now, after all his labors, my father's debts are still terrible. I worry every day about us losing the ranch. It would kill him. My father died when I was eight years old. His eyes were, well, let's just say he was blinded in a bar fight south of Chicago. My mother died during childbirth. She was a prostitute, and he was her, well, I don't, I don't know what he was. So I was sent off to an orphanage and ran away and fell in with a gang. My word. What a difficult life you've lived. Uh, the leader of the gang taught me how to read, taught me how to see all that was good in the world. He was a great man, in a way. But you killed people. Sure. And I've suffered for it. And that's the life I left, or tried to leave. Ah, oh, said too much, Bonnie. I'm an uneducated killer, sent here to do all I can do well. Kill a man in cold blood so that another man may do his part to cut crime in an area, and a rich man can be elected governor on the back of these promises. Civilization is a truly beautiful thing, Mr. Marston. <laughs> Listen, can you help me? Well, I can try. What do you need, money? No, nothing so complicated. I need an extra hand to take out the herd to pasture. <laughs> sure. Point me in the right direction. I hope you understand now why I've been playing my cards somewhat close to my chest. I didn't know you had a wife and child. Then again, I don't think I ever asked. They're, they're lucky to have a man like you. I ain't so sure about that, but thank you. How are you, Miss McFarland? Come 
Marston. Either that, or you were a cow in a past life. Thank you, Miss McFarland. I'll see you later. I have work to do back at the ranch. Let's get it. Sure, you'll find something you like here. Another satisfied customer. I don't know how you get away with these prices, mister. Why are these cards sticky? Well, lock me up and throw away the key. Who invited the that lady? That deal almost ruined me. I heard Mr. Wilkins got a damn tiger up in his barn. A tiger. Stop. No. Okay. Let's attach the whatchamacallit to the doohickey. I'm gonna call it. Let's get down to cases. Fold. Well, that contract was a phony. Now I'm either lucky or foolish. I'm cutting my wolf loose. Come. 
Hans calling. Shit. I call. I see the way he looks at my wife. Somebody's throwing dust. I fold. Hello. I'm watching you. I'll call that. This might tangle some spurs. Someone's feeling the pressure. That ain't the cards, it's how you play them. You'll believe anything I say because I'm white. Why don't we raise the stakes a little? You're in trouble now. I'm feeling lucky. Let's see what we can do with it then. Well, hello. Hope my luck turns next hand. Damn, that's me done and busted. Hello. I'm gonna take a day off next week. Harley bears are Pete and do it. How are you? That's mighty kind of you. I'll call. No, I'm out. She knew he was... Huh? Not a fact? I'm going to check. Fold. He's just an underprivileged hoodlum. I call. Okay, then. I'll place a bet. I gotta see that doctor about this burning. We have to get them people off that land. Well, hello. Never known a place to live up to its name more than Thieves Landing. I hear tell. I'm done. Paper head color, eh? The things you say, honestly. Call you. Share yeah. been locking. And good. Ain't that something? How's about it?
check. You only live. Shit. Water down the gin. Well, I'll be. Fold. You dirty playing devil. Just in my day, fellas. We've been waiting for you. Well, that contract was a phony. Hello. Early bears are beating, do it. Very nice. Careful, mister. Ah, another poor soul in need of some medical intervention. Howdy, mister. I believe the town of Blackwater would benefit Thank you from kindly. some kind of parade. Come back any time. Mr. Marston, how are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Did you meet my father? John Marston, this is my father, Drew McFarland. Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Marston. Please. So, my daughter informs me that you're here on some secret mission to uh, remove some undesirables from the county. Something like that. I'm grateful for the hospitality, sir. Well, you know, we've lived here for 30 years now. Came here from the east. The land had never been settled. For 10 years, we fought the Indians. Tough men. And we had outlaws, and we had drought, and we had smallpox, and terrible winters, cholera. I buried more of my children than I raised. Sorry to hear that, sir. I've seen strong men wither and die under that unforgiven sun. That whole herd of cattle was take sick and die. But I've never once doubted my life here. No, sir. When I hear about this so-called federal government sending out agents to covertly murder and control people, then I start to worry. I mean, yeah, all right, Williamson is a menace. And men like him are the plague. But isn't a government agent a worse menace? And all that symbolizes, I mean. You may be right, sir. Well, you're a brave man. And you're always going to be welcome here. But you tell your friends out east that we don't want to live like that out here. Sneaking around and spying and secret missions. Right? It's preposterous. 
Trust me, sir. I agree with you. Good. Well, we won't insult you any further. Come on, Bonnie, we got things to do. Mr. Marston, do you want to join us? It's Daddy's favorite pastime. Apart from political discourse, that is. What is? Breaking in horses. Come on. I hear you're a pretty decent rider. For a city dweller, that is. <laughs> You're gonna need this, Mr. Marston. Right, now you got some rope on your belt. Let's see if we can't wrangle some horses. Sure have some interesting theories on what the government's doing, sir. They ain't theories, Mr. Marston. I saw the telegram Marshall got from Blackwater. It ain't exactly a state secret if it sent you. Well, is he wrong? I saw those men from the train. The government can go to hell if you ask me. Those sons of bitches and steal a coin off a dead man's eyes. Mr. Marston! He's right. Now, I don't know much about politics. Please, Paul, can we just But I know the we're ride? only as free as they say we are. Power's like a drink. The more you have, the more you want. And there's few men who can handle it. There's certain things in this country a woman could do much better if you ask me. I ain't gonna argue with that, Miss McFarland.
so many folks in trouble. It'll sap your spirit and make you poor, but it's straight, and it's 
decent. There's no better night's sleep than after an honest day's work. It's no wonder you look so tired, then. Some deck must be shy of Joker, Miss McFarland. Who'd have thought you'd be such a natural at busting Broncos? That was fun. I think you could be a fine rancher one day, if you can bear to stop killing people for a living. Sure. Hey, Bonnie. Hamus was saying some horses been spotted somewhere outside of Armadillo. Let's go, Mr. Marston. We can really do with those horses. Come on, Mr. Marston. Let's head for Armadillo. You never did tell me why you were never married. Aside from the snobbery, that is. You sure ask a lot. I'm just surprised, that's all. You must have been quite a catch. The fact that you're talking in the past says it all. No, that's not what I mean. You must have had some suitors, that's all I'm saying. Some, I suppose. Here and there. A ranch in the middle of Hennigan's stead ain't really the place to find a husband. Amos, he's a little, well, you know, countryfied. Where'd you get your airs and graces, Miss McFarland? From a couple of cheap governesses Paul hired to save us from being savages. I'd like to talk about more than just cattle and chickens sometimes, that's all. And after my brother left, it was up to me to become the man of the ranch. He'd never admit it, but my pa's a lot frailer than he looks. You're worth two of any man I know, miss. I'll try to take that as a compliment. In many ways, my wife is kind of like you, Miss McFarland. Is that so? She's always been a woman in a man's world. You don't talk about her very much. It's kind of painful, but she's never far from my thoughts. There's my boys. Come on, Mr. Marston. Let's drive them up the canyon where it narrows. We'll trap them there.
blood of them. What magnificent animals they are. Hey, the stallion's getting away. Chase him down and bring him back. Thanks for your help today, Mr. Marston. We got some fine horses. You know, why don't you keep that stallion as your own, as a thank you from all of us? Thank you, ma'am. He's a fine animal.